All right, greetings, everyone. I had a, a student ask me about um, questions that ask you if something is an overestimate or an underestimate. There's a couple different contexts where that could come up. And so I wanted to talk about both of those contexts really quickly. So one context where this happens is um, we're talking about the approximation given by a tangent line. So I've set up this little Desmos activity to try to illustrate what's going on here. So you can see that we have um, the tangent line to the curve here. And then I have two other points marked um, that are going to illustrate what's going on. Okay. So the... Um, the tangent line here, they, they have, often ask you to write the equation of the tangent line at some point, and then they ask you to give the output, the approximation from the tangent line um, at some other value that's close to the point of tangency. That's this point right here, okay? The actual value at that point is this right here, okay? And that little green vertical line is, if you want to call it the error or how far away the approximation is from the actual value. So the the point that we're trying to illustrate here is um, the tangent line has a an approximation that's close to the actual value um, but the closer the point is to the point of tangency you can see that that green line starting to disappear it's getting getting shorter those two points are getting closer together there's a better approximation there but you can't really make my point right now so I'm going to move it further away to make the approximation worse but the point is that the output of the of the tangent line at this x value does give me an approximation although in this example not very good of the output of the curve at that point now the question often is once you get the approximation they'll ask is the approximation an underestimate or an overestimate. Well, clearly in the example we have here, this is an underestimate because the output from the tangent line is less than the output from the function itself. But in the middle of the AP exam, when you don't have a picture like this to look at, how are you supposed to know that? Well, you're supposed to know that by looking at the relationship that the tangent line has to the curve. The tangent line in this example here lies below the curve. Now, how do we know that? Well, besides seeing that that's happening here, something's frozen, okay. Besides seeing that the tangent line is below the curve, the one feature about the curve and where the tangent line is is the fact that the, t uh, the curve is concave up. And when the curve is concave up, the tangent line is going to lie below the curve on that interval. And therefore, the approximation from the tangent line will be less than the actual value, or it will be an underestimate to the actual value. Now, if we were to move the tangent line to a place where the curve is concave downward, okay, like over here, then we can see the output of the tangent line is greater than the output of the function itself, because again, when the tan when the uh, curve is concave downward now, the tangent line is going to lie above the curve, and so the output from the tangent line will be greater than the actual output. So the tangent line would give us an overestimate on that interval. Okay. Now, keep in mind that if we move way over here, now the tangent line is no longer um, behaving the same way. Okay. It's still above the curve um, through this point right here, but over here it starts, it becomes um, below the curve. Uh, so we, we can only look in just small intervals around the point of tangency. We want to make sure there's not a lot of crazy things happening. So at the point of tangency, the graph is concave down and it stays concave down on, where, on the point where, where, where we are analyzing. But if we were to move this point way over here, if it would follow me, it doesn't seem to want to. Oh, I know why. I restricted the domain um, of, of that point. But anyways, if I was able to drag it over here, you could see that the um, the output of the tangent line would be less than the output of the curve, which is which you might think contradicts what's happening over here, but you're extending the analysis too far away from the point of tangency. So you got to be careful. Uh, we've, we don't well define here in the AB class um, how far away we should be. We start to get into that distance at a later point um, in, in the BC class. So um, how good our approximation is. Uh, in this class here, we just want to get a sense of what's going on. So if the tangent line is above the curve because the curve is concave downward, then the tangent line would produce an overestimate. And if the tangent line is below the curve because the curve is concave upward, 
then the tangent line would give us an underestimate. Okay, so those are the things that you want to understand. Now remember, we use the second derivative to tell us if the function is concave up or concave down. So um, in those questions, they want you to justify how you know. So you'd have to say uh, that the, con uh, like in this example here, that the second derivative is positive. So the graph is concave upwards. So the tangent line lies below the curve. Okay, or over here, you would say the tangent line, I'm sorry, the second derivative is negative, graph is concave down, tangent line is above the curve, so you get an overestimate. Hopefully that makes sense. The other example we can see uh, of when, they're, when they ask the question is the approximation, an underestimate over, or an overestimate, is when we're doing rectangular approximations for area bounded by a curve. So if you look at this example here, okay, we have um, a bunch of rectangles. Remember, this is called a, a Riemann sum. And if you look at any interval, we're using the um, output at the right-hand endpoint to generate the, excuse me, the um, height of the rectangle. So on this subinterval here, it's the value at the right-hand endpoint. These are right-hand endpoint rectangles, okay? And so... Uh, I chose a curve that is um, decreasing the entire time. And since this curve is decreasing the entire time, in, uh, we're using right-hand endpoint rectangles. The rectangles the, will always lie below the curve because the height is coming from the smaller part of the interval. So on one interval right here, if I use left-hand endpoints, that output would be greater than if I use the right-hand endpoints. And so here, using the right-hand endpoints... Oops, I touched it. Didn't want that to happen. But anyways, using the right-hand endpoint, that value is less than what's happening at the left-hand endpoint. So when I draw the horizontal line back this direction here, because the curve was decreasing, the rectangle is going to give us less of a value than the actual area bounded by the curve. So this right-hand endpoint uh, approximation would be an underestimate because the curve is decreasing. Now, I think from what I said, it would make sense that the you would understand that the curve would a left hand endpoint would be occurring. I got to remember how to do this. I didn't make this app or this uh, Desmos activity for this. Um, I found it. Okay, oh, you got to click that off and click this back on. There's the these are the left hand endpoint rectangles, and so you can see now. Um, with the left-hand endpoint rectangles because we're using the greater value on that interval that we divided this up into. Um, the rectangle height, when I draw from left to right now, because I'm using left-hand endpoint rectangles, the rectangle lies above the curve or there's more area under the rectangle than actual area under the curve so that the left-hand endpoint approximation would be an overestimate. So when a curve is decreasing, left-hand endpoints would give you an overestimate, and right-hand endpoints would give you an underestimate. Now, that stuff flips around when you have an increasing curve, so I'm going to pause and get an increasing curve here to show you. All right, let's just use a, a simple um, parabola here. Well, the other one was a simple parabola, but just x squared, okay? x squared from 0 to 2 is increasing, Okay, and so that means on any subinterval, the right hand endpoint is going to produce a greater value than the left hand endpoint. So if I use left hand endpoint rectangles, which is what we're still looking at here, okay, the left hand endpoint rectangles all lie below the curve, and the left hand endpoint rectangles now would produce an underestimate. So when the curve is increasing, the entire time on the interval that we're analyzing or using this approximation, then the left-hand endpoint rectangles will give us an underestimate. And the right-hand endpoint rectangles would give us an overestimate. Let me see if I can switch over to that real quick. All right. So the right-hand endpoint rectangles here are now giving us an overestimate. So when you're using left-hand and right-hand endpoint rectangles, what determines whether it's an overestimate or an underestimate is whether the curve is increasing or decreasing, and of course, which one you're using, left or right. So the curve is increasing, right-hand endpoint rectangles give you an overestimate, left-hand endpoint rectangles give you an underestimate. And if the curve was decreasing, it's the opposite. Left-hand give you the overestimate, and right-hand gives you the underestimate. Now, for trapezoids, they behave a little bit differently. Trapezoids 
uh, whether or not you have an underestimate or, or an overestimate depends on whether uh, the curve is concave upward or concave downward. Because remember, with trapezoids, you're connecting secant lines from the endpoints of the subintervals to points on the curve. So, I, you know, I go to this point of the curve, to this point of the curve, I'm connecting a secant line. And so a secant line, when the curve is concave up, lies above the curve. And so this would give us an overestimate. So the tangent, um, the trapezoid approximation gives us an overestimate if the curve is concave upward. If the curve is concave downward, let me just go back and switch to put in a 4 minus. You can see it here. Curve is concave downward, so the secant line lies below the curve. And therefore, um, the approximations here are underestimates. Okay, so um, they, they, they sometimes ask that. Who knows this year? Because this year is a little bit different uh, with, the a, with the AP exam. But um, if they ask you to judge whether or not the approximation is an over or underestimate, um, now you know how to do it. Midpoints, um, there's no real simple way for midpoints for us to work that out. So we're not going to worry about midpoints. Go study.